Here is our third example of summing a finite series using the method of differences or a telescoping series. If you haven't seen the first two videos, please do watch those, especially the first one as the main theory is in that one. In this question it says use the identity 4r cubed is identical to r squared r plus 1 all squared minus r minus 1 squared r squared to find the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed. You might recognise this from fp1. If you've done fp1, we know that the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed can be given now as n squared over 4 n plus 1 all squared. And that's what we call a standard result that we looked at. I've done a, a few videos on my channel looking at summing these series using the um, these results, these standard results. What we need to do now is show that to be the case. We've got this right here though. We've got four lots of r cubed. We want to use that to find. And what we're saying is this is identical. So if we sum this, we should get this based on our knowledge from the first two videos. But we've got four lots of it. So what I'm going to say now is if we do the following, if we do one quarter the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared r plus 1 all squared minus r minus 1 all squared r squared, that will be equal to the sum and let's see if we can squeeze it on. The sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed. This is what we're saying. We're saying by using the method of differences, if we sum this and take one quarter of it, it will be equal to this right here. So let's start with r is equal to 1. If we consider putting in 1 here, what we're going to get is 1 multiplied now by 1 plus 1, which is 2 squared. That's going to give me now, when r is equal to 1, we're going to have 4. When we put in 1 here, quite clearly what's going to happen is we're going to have 0, okay? So we're going to have 0 squared multiplied by 1 squared, which of course, anything multiplied by 0 is 0. When we now take r is equal to 2, we're going to sub this in. All I'm doing here is manually summing from r equals 1 to n of this. I'm going to divide it by 4 and I'll get that. So what we'll do now is sub in 2. What we'll have then is 2 squared. 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 squared. 3 squared is going to give me now, uh, that's going to give me 9, isn't it? And then 2 squared is going to give me 4, and that's going to give me three, uh, 36 from 9 times by 4. If we now sub in 2 into here, what you'll see is that we're going to get 1 squared, and then we're going to get 2 squared. And you can see that we've already started seeing our match. So that right there is going to be minus 4. Taking r equal to 3, if we sub in 3 here, what we're going to get is 3 squared multiplied by 4 squared. 4 squared 16, 3 squared 9, 9 times by 16 is 1, 4, 4. If we now sub in here, 3 into this part, we're going to get 3 minus 1, which is 2 squared, multiplied by r squared, which is 3 squared, and lo and behold, those two are now equal, as we should be recognising. Of course, if we wanted to, we could go for r is equal to 4. I don't think we'd need to. Um, certainly the first three you'll want to show. What we'll get then is 4 squared, and then we'll get 4 plus 1, which is 5 squared. That's 16, that's 25. 16 times by 25 is 400. And then, of course, as soon as we sub in 4 into this one, what we're going to get is 3 squared, 4 squared. And you'll see again that this will be 1, 4, 4. So we go dot, 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 dot. And now we start to look at the last two terms when r is equal to n minus 1. Remember, this is a penultimate term. If the last term is r is equal to n, then r is equal to n minus 1 is the penultimate term. So subbing it in, what we're going to have here is n minus 1 squared. And then we're going to have n minus 1 plus 1, which is going to give me n squared. So I'm going to write this now as n squared and then n minus 1 squared. Now if we sub in n minus 1 here, what we're going to get is n minus 2 squared and then r squared, well that's going to be n minus 1 squared. So I can write that now and I'll write it as n minus 1 squared and then we'll have n minus 2 squared. 
Taking the final term as r is equal to n, what we'll have now is the following. We will sub in n right here, and we'll get n squared, and then we'll get n plus 1 squared. So let's put that in there, n squared, n plus 1 squared. And then finally, we need to sub it into this one, and what you'll see is that we're going to get n minus 1 squared, and then n squared. And quite clearly, those two are equal. So writing this as n squared, n minus 1 squared, we now have our, what we would call, telescope in series. Again, that term is less likely to be used, but essentially what we're having is all of this middle is dropping out. So if I summed all of this up, 4 minus 4 is nothing, 36 minus 36 is nothing, 144 minus 144 is nothing. Quite clearly, this will... Don't want to do it, but I'll go with the one below. Now, if we start at the bottom as well, you'll see that this one is going to go with this one. This one will go with the one above here for n minus 2. And all we get left with now, and we can say the following. We can say that this sum right here, so what we've got then, the sum of what I've just found, one quarter of that, and that sum right here is going to be, we can ignore the zero, we've got n squared, n plus 1, all squared, is going to be equal to the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed. And if we just tidy that up slightly, not that we need to, but we could do, we can write this now as the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed is equal to n squared over 4 n plus 1 all squared. And if you look at that and look at that, that's exactly what we learned from FP1. We've just used the method of differences to show it. So whilst you might think that that's hyper inefficient, if there's such a term, we do need to know this method and we need to appreciate these are going to collapse and we collect all the terms up. So there we go. Nice and straightforward and fairly logical.